Okay, so just wanted to take a quick minute to show everybody what I've been working on here. And just as an, uh, as an F4, as a, as a four mentioned here, uh, this is basically just going to be a love letter to Simple Procedural Walk. It's a new plugin for Unreal Engine, and it is basically the best thing ever. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to it in the description. Having said that, let's go ahead and check it out here. So we have the game already running. Um, so we've got a little spider bot here, and this is, of course, you know, heavily influenced by Infenzia, by his latest tutorial. Loved it. It was great. I'll put a link to that as well. Um, anyway, so we have our spider bot here, and of course, we've got some nice, simple animations here. We can go fast. We can go um, slow. Great. So if you're not familiar with procedural animation, oh, here we go. We've got our just random patrolling bot here. I'll get out of the way of him. Go on, buddy. All right, so if you're not familiar with procedural animation, the computer is essentially um, just trying to figure out where each of the legs should be placed dynamically in real time. I haven't done any animations on this ahead of time. Let me show you some of the advantages. So as the character approaches you know, these spheres here, the body reacts and the legs react. And now we have our character actually climbing these two spheres and it knows where to put the legs. It knows how the legs should be placed on this you know, 3D surface, and it reacts the body accordingly. And when you know, you're going over rough terrain, it looks so good. This is something that you can't accomplish with traditional animation. Um, so as we come on over here, let's take a look at some of the other advantages here. So of course, um, your character will just put the legs where they need to go as you're moving around, looks good. Um, let's take a look at like a kind of a classic problem is I have a ramp here and the ramp is significantly wider than my character, significantly wider than the legs. So with traditional animation, you would have to either, you know, make a special instance and do a bunch of, oh my God, it's just so much coding in order to make that work or, you know, <laughs> just make the ramp bigger, which I think is what normally we do using this kind of tool though. Not a problem. The character pulls the legs in automatically and puts them right on the edge. Um, and that's just, you know, so freaking hot. Same thing here is we're trying to cross this gap here. The legs reach out in front of it. Yeah, looks good. So we're not, we're not left with legs just hanging out in the air. Yeah, so good. Uh, you'll probably notice as I'm spinning around, the legs aren't reacting. I have the spin rate turned up a little bit high. Um, so that's on me. Anyway, um, the tool is just really great, really responsive. Even just trying to come up, you know, 3D surfaces, you know, trying to climb almost vertically, it does a really good job. There's only one slight little hiccup here. And if you, let's see if we can do it. Yeah. So you can break this. Uh, and that's if you, if you go up a really, really steep surface, right up onto a vertical surface, up onto a wall. Um, it, it'll essentially just hang, you know, literally and figuratively, <laughs> but it's not that big of a deal, especially not for what I'm doing. And it's not totally game breaking. Your character can just recover from that anyway. So it's pretty, pretty amazing. I think, oh man, look at that guy over there. It looks so good walking around the environment. So creepy. Yeah. So I think. You know, I was already going to do robotic enemies for most of most of the game here, and you know my animation is pretty much done at this point. Um, so we've got some other enemies that we've worked up. We've got a little test model over there. You know, just testing out our AI. He's okay. He's not my favorite. He's not going to make it into the final cut. Um, but yeah, so the animation is mostly done for the game and just couldn't be happier with that. Anyway, thanks for checking this out. And I think next time we'll go ahead and post some environmental designs. So we'll see, we'll see what's going on there. Okay. So I just wanted to take another minute to go ahead and show off my kind of my finalized spider bot here. So you can see we went ahead and attached a nice gun to it. And you can see we've got some projectiles flying around the map here. So I finished up last time by saying, you know, my animations for the game are, are basically done. And a friend of mine said, well, what about firing animations? What about shooting animations? What about, you know, hit recoil animations? Um, and the procedural walk can essentially just take care of all of that as long as you're a little bit clever with it. 
So you can see when I fire my weapon, it looks like, you know, we're getting that, that reaction. We're getting that, that impulse, um, or that, that inverse from the, Ooh, <laughs> uh, from the fire it looks like boom. And I didn't have to do any animations for that. All we have to do is get the vector, the forward vector and apply, uh, apply an opposite force. And you can see when we, when we shoot our little guys, we can get our a nice good reaction to them. Anyway, it's obvious that they got a hit. We can probably bump that up a little bit. Yeah, get out of here, you. Anyway, so if you're clever with the tool, there's there's really a lot that you can do. And I'm just, man, I'm just having so much fun playing uh, playing Spider Tank here. We might have to include this as a, you know, something that the the main character can take over, something that the main character can uh, hijack. Oh yeah, get out of here. <laughs> um, or maybe, you know, we'll just make a straight up spider tank game because who doesn't want to play a game of spider tank? <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, I think that's it for today. So I hope you have a good, uh, good rest of your day. Thanks for checking that out. Goodbye.